Well now, look at you. Spent all your caps on a big old fancy weapon. A pretty nice one too. The minigun. I don't blame you. The staple of the series. Much like the laser rifle, the minigun synonymous with this video game franchise. I mean, it was awesome. You grab it in Fallout 3, shred through everything you want, and even in New Vegas. And in the first two Fallouts if you're good enough to find one. But, I guess I do have to tell you a little bit about this gun. But I'm going to be blunt about you. First and foremost, this weapon is garbage. Yeah, you heard me. Garbage. Now, give me a few minutes to explain why. So, the minigun. It's one of the people's favorites. You can go through a lot of games and find it everywhere. Some games make it rare. Some games make it only on turrets. Some, like Fallout, allow you to carry it wherever you want and blast who you want with it. Now, we all know that the minigun handles iffy, but its firepower is always made up in DPS. But there's a couple problems with this gun, and I'm gonna go on a limb, it's probably saying that it's because it's a starter weapon. You get it the second quest or the first quest, when right when you get out and it's handed with you your first power armor. This may be the root of the problem. But I can go over why it's no good. Don't worry. You can still use it. Just don't take it with you to the end of the game. <laughs> For you'll see the reasons why. But anyway, let's get started. Now, the minigun itself. Even though it's heavy, and, you know, big. What'd you really think the handling would be like? <laughs> I don't think I need needed to do that. We all know it's a mess. You hold on the trigger, it sprays everywhere, and it sprays anything with bullets, whatever's in front of you. It's pretty obvious. It's like any other minigun from any other game. Except this one, we can customize a little bit. But only a little. Now, before we start talking about numbers, keep in mind that I do have the Heavy Gunner perk fully maxed out. So you see its maximum damage value. Now, to be honest, I only said a little, I meant a little. We have almost nothing to do here. We got barrel, sights, and muzzle. So we must well start with the barrel. Now, you get the standard barrel, which already keeps at a base value. The accelerated barrel gives a little more damage, not so much range, but a higher rate of fire. And makes the gun a little bit lighter, too. Some people opt for that. But I'll choose the tri barrel. Reduces the amount of barrels down to three, increases damage, range, accuracy, and recoil. That's what we want. That's what most people want. So these boosts the damage up to 20. So, it's not a huge difference, but it is big and for DPS. So for sights, to be honest, you only have two choices. No sights, or a shitty gunner sight. Now, it's a little obvious what you go with. The gunner sight. Because that's going to help you a little bit with the accuracy. For the muzzle, to be honest, for my opinion, I'm going to say, don't do this. Don't put the shredder on. Unless you're planning to use your melee weapon as a bludgeoning tool, I wouldn't recommend this. This thing is heavy. It's adding almost five pounds of weight to your gun. And to be honest, I don't see a whole lot of situations that use this. I'd rather just knock someone back and then hose them down with bullets again, because I don't think this weapon is a very effective melee tool. So I opt for no muzzle. But that's my opinion. You can do whatever you want with your gun. Taking it back down to the shooting range, we can see that the performance has improved. It's still a little bit all over the place, but not as bad. It's still a minigun. You can't change that fact. But at least it, we can control it now, and we can actually use it in combat effectively. If we're in a power suit, this would be a different story, but we're not talking about power suits here. Now, using the sight, to be honest, the sight does nothing. It's all in the numbers. It's no different from the hip, in my opinion. The spread is just as bad, and the sight doesn't really give you a cross here, it's just a big, broad circle. So it's not really that helpful. But let's take it to a combat situation to get a better idea. Shooting range doesn't do it justice. So, going up, we got a hound. A rather small target at a close to medium range, and to be honest, it's a little difficult to hit. But no matter. It is down anyway, and we'll move on to the other super mutants. I chose super mutants because we often use bigger weapons on them. Now the first super mutant, are we going to Overlord? 
overlords up here around level 40 plus. Now, we can immediately see we crippled his leg very quickly, but we're having difficulty due to the sheer spread of the weapon, so I get up close to finish him off, and it's a bit painful to use. Not a very quick process, and in that time, the other suit have hardened me, and their hounds have caught up and start chewing on my legs. So, not exactly a good scenario. Uh, we got a regular super mutant. Luckily, the small guys dropped very quickly. That's good. But now we have a warlord. The more powerful super mutants, pairing after level 50 plus. So I got up close to finish him off and to deal with the recoil, and... Yeah, this... I'm not kidding on this. You're seeing this. This is a minigun. Unable to kill this guy. Almost. There we go. 315 bullets it took. Regular super mutants, they drop just fine. But my enemy's ranks do not consist of regular super mutants. That was awful. Nonetheless, after that battle, we are a little exhausted on ammo. So now we need to resupply ourselves, get some more ammunition. Let's go back to the gun dealer we bought it from. So let's go to our 5mm. I have my max barding skills up, by the way. And, oh. Oh. Yeah. Per bullet is one cap. Very cheap. But consider how many bullets you just put out in that one battle. One whole magazine, more or less. 506 is one magazine. That is expensive. Unless you have my kind of caps, that is very expensive. Let's go see something. Where is it? Oh look, he's selling another minigun. The price? 563. That's right. Reloading this gun once, from zero bullets to 500, is nearly the full price of the weapon itself. This is the biggest problem with the minigun. Its damage is atrocious, its accuracy is mediocre, but its price is through the roof. This weapon is too expensive to run, and it's not worth the effort. This gun is garbage. Now, I hear some naysayers, but why don't you have steady hand? That, that will fix everything. That will fix your accuracy problems. I don't have steady aim for anything. I've used every weapon without any trouble. Now, if I need steady aim to fix the problem with just one gun, the minigun, it's not worth it. I can use my perks for something else. My level up points on uh, something more useful. <sighs> Nevertheless, let's finish off some pros and cons. Pros. It's a minigun. It's awesome. It's awesome to shoot. It makes you look cool. And it has high DPS. That's about it for the pros. Let's go over some cons. The, the damage is not really there for high-level units. Its accuracy is all over the place. Its ammunition is too expensive. And not to mention, the weapon's just plain damn heavy. It's truly unfortunate. This loved weapon by many people. In fact, it would be hard to find someone who doesn't love this weapon. But in Fallout 4, you're gonna find few who actually do love it that play the game for an extensive amount of time. Because when you get up there in levels, it just doesn't deliver anymore. Yes, I know. You wasted your caps. But don't worry. At least you can give it to one of your followers or... a settlement person or something and they can defend it. But, in terms of you using it, I wouldn't get too attached to it. It's not really worth the effort, as I've been saying. But, that is the weapon showcase for today. Thanks for watching.